Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And today I want to take a look at Elite Dangerous. Or rather talk about Elite Dangerous. Now, I haven't really covered Elite Dangerous before in any videos. Um, because I started really making videos on this channel a lot later after Odyssey had been released and uh, you know reviews has come in and the community slowly started to decline now I've never played elite dangerous and the main reason for that was kind of the the difference between uh character leveling so in star citizen we don't have character leveling and elite dangerous the kind of idea is that you work your way up to be elite uh, elite commander so that concept alone kind of made me decide to purchase Star Citizen over Elite Dangerous. And then when news came came out about engineers, uh, I kind of decided that again, that was kind of seemed like more grindy gameplay mechanics. So I decided to stay away from it. Um, I do, you know, want to play it at some point. Still seems like a very interesting game. Uh, I'm a big fan of space games, sci-fi games, and uh, uh, I, I think we need more of them. So I'm very interesting to hear, interested to hear what happens, what's happening in the community. And uh, so I want to take a look at this video. This video is by uh, Down to Earth Astronomy. He's a pretty cool content creator. I've been following him for a while. He uh, he does Elite Dangerous, Star Citizen, other space game content cool content creator i will leave this video linked in the video description below so without further ado let's get into this video i want to talk about the future of elite dangerous where i think it's going what i think frontier is going to do and the possibility of a sequel okay now before we can dive into elite dangerous itself and what i think will happen to the game we unfortunately need to talk finances um as i think this is going to be a majority factor for what Frontier is going to do in the next coming years. You see, Frontier is in a bit of a rough spot right now. Taking a look at their stock price since their all-time high on January 15, 2021, okay. they've lost almost... So let's take a look at this for a second. Um, this, I mean, the line going down here, that, that doesn't seem good. And it looks like, you know, maybe it went up around the time of Odyssey's launch and now it's down below uh, past where it was before Odyssey came out. So Odyssey was one of those things that I feel like was um, kind of a big letdown for the community because you have to consider, you know, what a lot of people were looking forward to about the game uh, elite dangerous is a fully released game it's not you know a, you know a, an alpha like star citizen um but initially with the kickstarter i believe that frontier wanted to do different things like uh you know ship interiors and uh have your character walk around on planets and and all that stuff and it was initially supposed to be a lot like star citizen um but they decided to uh, release a game that was like a little bit pared down and so I guess the idea was to add that stuff in later. Now I think when they marketed Odyssey a lot of people saw that expansion as the expansion where Frontier would add in a lot of the content from that period because a lot of people were, uh, were hoping that they would add ship interiors into the game. Now, later on, after Odyssey was released, uh, Frontier announced that they were not going to do ship interiors and that, uh, you know, they were not going to do certain other things that the players were looking forward to. Um, they did release fleet carriers and fleet carrier interiors um, and a lot of other content. A big problem with Odyssey's launch was, you know, performance and uh, kind of the gameplay around engineers again as i said it was kind of like one of the big factors one of the big reasons why i didn't want to get into the game at the time that that kind of grindy mechanics uh, is i'm really not a fan of it 
um but this this is a lot of money lost and uh i don't know what frontier is going to do to fix that so let's let's keep watching and and see what the plans are 93 percent of their market value wow now, i don't care what kind of company you're running or what you're doing if you're a publicly traded company that loses 93 percent of your market value in just a few years something's going to change something's not going according to plan yeah. looking at the latest financial report we can see that their 2023 financial year had an operating loss of 26 million pounds that's a lot of money you guys um and that's, that's kind of the big difference between frontier and cig again cig is a privately owned company so they don't really have to make a profit in fact if they don't make a profit it there are tax benefits to that as a privately owned company um but as a publicly owned company uh 26 million is a lot of loss now i don't think cig has ever lost that much money 26 million is a lot of money to lose um in one year it depends on the cash flow situation how much money frontier is still bringing in it, it might be possible for for them to you know make more money by releasing another game uh and that's kind of what he's talking about here he's talking about frontier making an elite dangerous 2 um but to me that seems like that'd be very expensive and if you're already losing money and we don't know how long that's gonna take uh that could take years to to develop a game you know the the genre was a lot more competitive now than when elite first came out when elite dangerous first came out you know star citizen was just like a hangar module um you know no man's sky was really struggling because of its terrible launch uh starfield wasn't out yet uh you know starship evo wasn't out yet um space engineers ha had like i think limited stuff going on with it so the the space gaming genre wasn't really competitive back then now uh i think that's that's a much bigger story if you're gonna release a second game it might take a long time to develop and by the time it is developed a lot of other games might come out that kind of push the tech envelope so i don't know i don't know maybe i'm getting ahead of myself let's keep watching and see what else he's gonna say and last year they only barely made a profit Taking a quick look at their cash balance, it seems like they can survive another year like this before okay. the bank accounts are empty. What oh. does all this mean for Elite? They so they have 28 million. They have 28 million dollars in the bank. That could hold them over for a year. And of course, they're still probably bringing in more money selling different stuff. Um, so, yeah. If I was in Frontier's place, to be honest, I wouldn't be focusing on Elite. If you ask me personally, oh, okay. I would love it. I hope they will, and I wish they would. But I also have to be a little realistic. If you look at where Frontier is right now, and if I were in their place, I probably wouldn't be focusing too much on Elite either, as much as I would want them to. What I think Frontier needs to do, and what I also think that they will do, is they need to get back to basic. They need to focus yeah. on the games that they know they're good at, and then they have had success with. Uh, in the past. Not saying that Elite Dangerous wasn't a success, it actually has been. It's been not the most... Well, that's interesting, because I know that they have made other games. They made a F1 game, Jurassic Park game, and I think they're making an Indiana Jones game. Um, that, I, I don't know how much attention those games get. Again, at the end of the day, you have to really market those games. Uh, I think Elite Dangerous kind of sells itself. At this point, there's a big community around the game already. Um, I don't know how much people is in the market for Jurassic Park, Roller Coaster, uh, Indiana Jones game. You really got to put the word out there that you're making this game specifically. I know a lot of people don't really know Frontier for those other games. Most people kind of know Frontier for, you know, just Elite Dangerous. So, in my personal opinion, I think they should focus on Elite. I think Elite is kind of their bread and butter. I mean, this franchise is, I mean, it, since the 1980s, uh, Elite 1, Elite 2, all those other games, 
very old franchise that kind of pioneered the space sim genre, the open world space game, kind of got started off with Elite One. So I think they should kind of double down on, on, on Elite Dangerous and what they're good at and maybe focus on the mechanics in the game that the players like. Like, honestly, I think they should just like re refactor engineering. I think engineering is, is just too brutal on the community and people don't want that. People want to explore. And uh, I know there's another content creator, uh, DG360. He's in the Star Citizen community as well. Cool content creator. Uh, go check him out as well. Um, he He's also from the Elite Dangerous community and has made a lot of content on it in the past. And, uh, you know, his thing is that, you know, the game kind of got watered down a little bit and it's not as dangerous anymore. You know, a lot of things, a lot of, a lot of noise gets made about PVP and Star Citizen, but at the end of the day, it really makes things interesting, makes things exciting, uh, makes it feel like a multiplayer game. Right now, the, this crazy golden ticket event is going on and, you know, I'm playing, I haven't found one yet, uh, uh, you know. I've been working like crazy, so I really haven't had that much time to spend in the game. I think I've uh, I've gone in there for a couple of hours, four or five hours, and I went to you know a bunker and and did some different retrieval missions. And again, no luck. Found some cool subscriber helmets, but the point is, all of that stuff, those events really make the game feel alive. Player to player interaction really makes the game feel alive, and you know if Elite Dangerous you know, focuses more on this engineer, this kind of grindy gameplay, you know, not dangerous. It, you know, people might lose interest. I don't know. I don't know. Again, I'm not in the community. I haven't played the game before, but as an outsider looking in, I think, yes, he's right. You, they need to go back to their roots, but, I, I, you know, I think they should focus on Elite. I think one of the most profitable games for... Uh, Frontier so far. Yeah. Now we know from the original yeah. Kickstarter for Elite Dangerous that Frontier said they had a 10 year plan for Elite Dangerous. The game came out in 2014, so if that is true, well, we are reaching the end of that 10 year plan. Personally, I don't think you can make a plan that far out into the future. Yeah, and it's they tough. have also a quote from their latest financial report where they say, and I quote, after nearly 10 years since the first public beta, we have greatly exceeded the original vision for the game. Now, that's true. They have greatly exceeded what originally was planned for the game. That might also have been a thing, few things left out from what was originally planned for the game. And especially with this quote, it doesn't sound like someone that's looking forward. It's all is looking back, it's looking to the past. And that's not something you would usually do if you have lots and lots of plans for a game going forward. Does this mean that they will pull the plug on Elite? No, absolutely not. I don't think so. I think it's very, very unlikely that we're going to see a server shutdown for Elite Dangerous. The server is going to be online for years and years to come. See, no reason why Frontier would pull the plug on those. Yeah, I don't think it's that bad yet. I mean, uh, you got to you got to put things in perspective here. Elite Dangerous was launched a very long time ago, and for most games, even AAA games, to survive for 10 years or, or as long as elite has it's very rare that is a big accomplishment games released even this year are already dead i, I recently watched a video about you know the that gundam battle royale game that came out uh late last year they're already shutting it down they're shutting it down in november so for elite dangerous to last this long and have such a big and active community that's a big accomplishment so I don't think the game is going anywhere. I don't think it's that bad yet. Um, I think the I think the studio is just in a rut right now. David Braben stepped down as CEO, and I think now the new guy is, uh, you know, he needs to get his bearings and kind of figure out what decisions need to be made for the company. But I think they should listen to the player base and just. Keep focusing on Elite. I think they recently released the F1 game and Planet Coaster and all this other stuff. And those games didn't do so good. Because you really have to market those games. You have to spend money putting it out there. 
getting in front of people, letting people know that these games are out and uh, you're making them. And if you don't focus on that marketing, it's not going to be successful. Right now, they're running this aftermath story with the Thargoids. They've been doing that for quite a while. That's probably going to continue the rest of this year, maybe into the beginning of next year as well. After that, I can see them doing one or two things. Either they put Elite Dangerous into maintenance mode, they'll keep the servers online, they might do the odd community goal here and there, but we're not going to see any updates, we're not going to see more bug fixes, there might be security updates if security vulnerabilities are spotted, but that's about it. The other option is that whole feature overhaul that they have now been talking about for years. They told us okay. last that they would give us more information at the end of this year, and we'll see if they do. And everybody's been speculating what this feature overhaul is. We don't know. We only know that they, there is a feature overhaul of some major feature in the game that they have been working on. Okay. Whether that has been scrapped or whether they're still working on it, we don't really know. Um, speculations are that it is either engineering, because a few years back there was this engineering asked a lot of different questions about what people thought about engineering. So at least at that point, I think that they thought about making engineering an engineering overhaul. The other one that has been often mentioned is power play, as it's a very underutilized feature in the game that hasn't seen any changes since it was originally introduced at all, been a complete abandoned feature, so that would be a natural candidate also to get a overhaul and maybe to try okay. to get some people engaged in power play as well. So those are the two ones that's likely, and if they are going down that route with a feature overhaul, I think it's going to be one of those two. But as I said, they have told us they would give us more information at the end of the year, that doesn't mean they're going to tell us what the feature overhaul is. More information can also be, we're not doing it, we're going into maintenance mode. Now, while yeah. all of this can sound dark and gloomy and grim, I think it's really important to separate Elite Dangerous and the Elite franchise as a whole. So while I agree that Elite Dangerous is a bit of a rough spot right now, the Elite franchise is doing well, probably as well as it ever has. For newer players, yeah, I mean, that's what I think too. Uh, again, like I said, it's a very old franchise. Uh, they can really make a lot of money off of it. If they kind of just stick with it. Those who may not know, Elite Dangerous is actually the fourth game in the old Elite series of game. The first one came out in 1984, just called Elite, followed by Elite 2 in 1993, and Elite 3 First Encounter in 1995 and then of course finally the latest installment elite 4 also named elite dangerous in 2014 and especially with elite dangerous here it really helped put like space sim games on the more public radar a lot more people are aware of the space sim and space gaming genre thanks to elite dangerous and that's also why i think that and that's also why i think that despite the decline we're seeing in interest in player numbers for Elite Dangerous, should Frontier come out and announce a new game, a fifth Elite game, I'm absolutely sure that a very large portion of those that player base is going to return back and begin playing the new game. Another Elite game. I think that would be kind of tough for them to pull off at this point. And I say that because not just you know, the heightened competition, not just because the cost or the time it would take to make, but because I think that Elite Dangerous, the game they have now, is fundamentally kind of a better proposition. And I say that because they're, you know, kind of what I said back about Starfield what I said about Elite Dangerous Odyssey. People play different games for different reasons. Um, one game isn't necessarily going to kill another. I never assumed that Starfield was going to kill Star Citizen or, you know, No Man's Sky or anything like that because people play those games for what those games bring to the table. And I think that with Odyssey and a lot of the mentality going into things is that you could potentially put a lot of egg, a lot of your eggs in one basket, so to say, and uh, spend a lot of money on a game that doesn't have those core pillars that the elite community might prefer. 
and uh, in my opinion that was one of the big reasons why i think odyssey wasn't successful because it didn't really hit the nail on the head for what an elite player is really looking for in a game i think an elite player and again i haven't played the game i think an elite player is really looking for exploration looking for you know that kind of seamless immersion big big solar system they they're looking for vr they're looking for console support a lot of these things f dead dev dropped you know they drop console support they drop vr support they you know have a lot of grind the the fps mechanic that you know is can be interesting content but in the days where odyssey was out the game was steady you know people were playing it enjoying it buying skins doing different things and it was steady because that's what the player base really wanted and that's kind of the niche that elite dangerous really carved out for itself in my opinion with a new game are you going to do more of that the same thing are you going to go back to your roots or are you going to try to compete with starfield and star citizen and no man's sky and all these other games and kind of throw all these features at the wall because i feel like that is kind of like an an uphill climb type situation where you have to you know they might uh, again i feel like they're kind of at their limit with this engine and i feel like they kind of feel like they're at their limit with the engine so if they're going to do a new game they might have to do it in a new engine unreal 5 or something like that i don't know and that could take a lot of time that could be very expensive i feel like in my personal opinion, and, and this is what I honestly think, I think if they made a standalone type situation, I know a lot of players kind of call for this idea of like um, maybe an offline mode where, and, and modding, that's another big thing. Like Starfield has modding, uh, it's gonna, it, there's a lot of mods coming up for now. You know, Bethesda is going to, you know, fully integrate modding coming up pretty soon. I think if, I think if FDev open up, because again, if you think about it, if they are, let's say hypothetically, they are going to make another game, they're probably going to have to use a different engine, which means they're not going to be continuing developing this engine. So there, there, there shouldn't technically be anything wrong with opening up the engine for modding if they're not going to use it anymore. So that's one thing uh the second thing is again overhaul engineering you know do what the players want take a poll with the community ask the players what they want and just start developing those things kind of get back those people you lost uh that's the second thing and kind of the third thing is i think they should kind of make a spin-off you know take full advantage of the franchise elite is a very old franchise very storied franchise i hate to say this some people might disagree with me but i think they should make like a standalone game in the franchise for vr a lot of players want vr a lot of players played uh elite dangerous for vr uh so i think they should make a standalone vr game for like oculus quest or pico or whatever and uh allow players to fly around their ships explore you know the the galaxy um you know drive around on planets in the in the buggy and that type of stuff i mean is kind of the bread and butter of the game imagine having your vr headset on trading going to different space stations going to different planets exploring finding plants doing all this stuff right there in the headset um and again that kind of that kind of hits on the the um the headset thing because again you know oculus quest 3 game pass is coming to oculus put the game on game pass or something like that people who already have game pass will pick it up to play it on the oculus and vr boom you're making tons of money uh because again the developers get kind of a cut from game pass or uh, i don't know entirely how that works but you have a huge player base right there and uh, 
Elite Dangerous is a perfect game for VR. Uh, it would excel hugely if if uh, if Dev put Elite Dangerous, they made a standalone VR game. They put that on um, on Oculus. So many people would, would would get that if they put on Game Pass. So many people would play that. So I think that would be a huge boost to the community that they need influx of money. And again, they have like twenty eight million dollars in the bank. That's a year's worth. Uh, they need they need to keep making money. They can't they can't keep losing twenty something million dollars every year if they only have twenty something million dollars in the bank. They need to get an influx of cash before they even think about making another game. So if 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 it takes them a year or two to get whole again and it takes another four or five to develop a new game, then that puts the game coming out in like 2027 or something like that and at that point how far along will star citizen be how far along will no man's sky be how much modding will the community do for starfield the, that's a lot of competition and uh, i don't know i don't i don't know if it, it'll be too little too late at that point so i think they need to get the money in first and then they can really you know focus on an elite dangerous to make a game that really kicks butt you know with more money but right now i don't know if they can afford it so yeah i'm not gonna watch this whole video this seems like a really good video a really good topic this guy's a really cool content creator again he talks about elite dangerous he talks about star citizen he's big into space games and stuff like that very cool content creator i'll leave this video linked in the video description below you guys need to go check it out I know uh, I've already been talking for 30 minutes here. You guys know how I, I can just ramble on and on and on. I don't want to take up too much of your time, so I'm just going to cut it right here. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching this video and showing support. You guys have been knocking it out of the park lately on the videos, watching it, enjoying, commenting, liking, subscribing. I really appreciate all of that stuff. Uh, I love talking to you guys. Uh, so, like I said, the end of all of these videos, like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you want to see more. And I will see you guys in the next one. Salute.